What's going on, guys? We are with we are in on base with Mookie Betts. This is my uh, first show. Sorry, I just messed that up. First show, we got uh, Christian Yelich here. We're live in the BR app. Make sure you hit us up in the comments with all the questions, comments, whatever it is. Um, so, with further without further ado. We're going to get to Christian Yelich. What's going on, Yelich? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. First of all, you ain't had to do me like that yesterday. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, I'm sure you've know. gotten me before in the last 10 years at some point. <laughs> at some point. I was grinding. Yeah. Thought I had me a nice little soft single. Uh, you're you never, you're nice never grinding. <laughs> Whatever, man. But. <laughs> all right, so, Yelich, uh, I thought we, had, we, had, we have a nice connection. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, we are both MVPs. Um, I want to run off your stats real quick. So, obviously, 2018 NL MVP, your two-time All-Star. Is that three-time now? Two. Two-time All-Star. Three-time Silver Slugger and a Gold Glove winner. That's uh, that's some dope stuff, bro. It's no, it's no Mookie Betts. It doesn't have to be Mookie, it's, bro. It's close. We'll, we, got a little, we got a little something. Yeah, a little something. You know, this is Christian Yelich, bro. So, um, what do, tell, me, tell me about 2018. What do you, what do you uh, remember the most? Um, you know, it was my first year here in Milwaukee, so um, it kind of how it is when you're kind of learning a new place, new team. Um, you know, I, all I'd known was Miami and the Marlins um, at first, and then come here, kind of just getting your feet wet, and then it turned into a, a special season kind of just after the All-Star break where, um, you know, things started clicking. We had a good team. Um, we actually ended up losing to the Dodgers before we were going to play you guys um, in the World Series that uh -huh. year. and then That was a dope series, too. It was. kind of kind of went either way. That one, yeah. that one still hurts a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> you lost to your boy Belly, too. We lost, we lost to Belly. Belly was the one that beat us in, the, in Game 7, pretty much. Yeah. He, hit the, he hit the two run homer, yeah. and then that was kind of a wrap for us. But uh, it, was a cool, it was a cool season, man. That's kind of how we got to know each other a little bit after mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, we knew T. Shaw and um, yeah. Brock Holt kind of. Oh, yeah. Kind of got to know you through, the, yeah. through those two guys and then playing against each other, obviously. So what, what like, in that season, like, what clicked? You know what I'm saying? Like, it kind of, can yeah. you say what clicked? Because I can tell, like, yeah. for me, I found a mechanic, right? Yeah. I found a mechanic that I could just repeat over yeah. that's, and that's over. That's what I was going to say over. is, uh, you know, you're always tinkering in baseball, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're always trying to, you're always trying to get better, um, you know, nothing ever stays the same. Like you have to find, and then when you have those really special years, like, like you said, it's it's one little thing that you can repeat over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like it's a simple cue or a simple movement yep. that you can just you can do all the time. Yep. It just puts you in a good position. Doesn't matter who's pitching, right? And you're just like, I have control of everything. Yep. Like you're just like, I'm on time for everything, and this is how it goes. And so that's kind of what happened. Was it was more of a timing thing than anything. Mm -hmm. It was like I changed the timing a little bit to be just like a little earlier so you just see everything a lot better and then really just like where you're making contact gets better and then you start driving the ball. Um, you know what sucks? Like trying to find that again. When it, cause oh, when it yeah. goes... It goes when you're in the when you're in the middle of it. You're like, oh, this is never going to change. Yeah. I'm going to be I'm going to be doing this forever. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it goes, man, it's uh, it's tough to get back. It's one of those things where, you know, it's one of the most frustrating sports mm -hmm. for for a reason. Just because, you know, it's just you can be there forever, and then yeah. one day you just show up, and then it's just gone. <laughs> it's gone randomly. You know? And how does we, that happen? We spend all day and night. I'm sure you hit. Yeah. In the mirror, right? Oh, yeah. You take BP in the mirror. Oh, yeah. Everybody Just like does. all of us. Whether they admit it or not. Exactly. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> everybody hits in the mirror. Everybody. And you try and repeat this move, and it just doesn't come back, you know? Yeah. But it's, you know, it is what it is. But you're just constantly adjust. Like, you have to – I think each year you have, like, a new swing, whether it's yeah. major or minor. Like, each year is its own year. So, like, your the way your body moves, everything kind of changes. Um, whether that's you get older, you deal with injury stuff, like, you're always kind of trying to make adjustments and get better. And I think the guys that can do it for a really long time at a, at a high level, they're they're able to, to make changes and adapt to the game, getting older, their bodies. Um, and like so that's kind of what you do. Like, you, you're like, you know what, in 18 – 19 whatever years right yeah i'm just not that guy anymore so i just got to be the guy i am right now yeah you just kind of try and work with what you got and like trust me i've been i've banged my head against the wall for years mm -hmm. trying to trying to like repeat that and get that back and then at some point you got like all right i just got to make an adjustment and kind of started doing that the last 
month or so yep. of just like, all right, whatever that was, it's just like, it's not working like that right now. Maybe it comes back at some point, but you got to do what gives you a chance to succeed. Yeah, because, I mean, if, if you think about it, before even when the mechanic clicked, it just kind of clicked. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just happened. So, mm-hmm. you know, and you weren't necessarily looking for it. It just kind of happened. It just so happened, maybe yeah. we're looking for something that just kind of happens well there's no there's no one way to do it i don't right, think like yeah. you, you think that's the only way because like that's when you had your most success you're like i want to chase that but if you watch guys around the league like, everybody hits different so yeah. there's not really one way to do it and really all it is is just putting your body in a position consistently to like yep, to have success like to to be on time to be in a good position to like launch from and, like uh-huh. that's all you really need to do how you get there doesn't really matter it you know? changes. It right. Changes. So, like, it can change. And, like, once you do that, you're like, all right, I just got to figure out how to get there. Whether yeah, it's yeah. the way I did it in 18 or the way I'm going to try and do it now. And, like, it's just a game of constant adjustments. And the guys that can adjust good, those are the guys that those are guys stick that always, around for a yeah, long time. Yeah, you're right. All right, bro. So, um, there's a little game. It's called uh, On Base and Off Base. Basically, like, true or false. Yeah. Um, you, you're either in or out. All right. So, the first thing. Getting Chipotle 142 <laughs> days in a row. Off base? I mean, everybody – so I've seen that a bunch, and trust me, like, you played in the minor leagues. When you're in the minor leagues, <laughs> you're going to Chipotle. Yeah, now. Like, yeah. it's, just, it's just what it is. You're in a bunch of small towns. There's not a ton of options. So if you're like, all right, like, let's go. I don't know if me and JT went – we didn't definitely didn't go 142 days in a row because okay, that's, so that's, me, that's psychotic me, behavior. That, me, yeah, that is, <laughs> that's that a little is. crazy. We did go a lot. We did go a lot because I think it was in um, it was in Greensboro. And then somebody said somewhere along the line, like in the last few years, that like we just went every day. And that's then amazing. it just kind of ran with it. They started putting it on scoreboards and mm-hmm. stadiums, and then it kind of just took off. But So are you ever just going to like roll with it with them? Sometimes I just told him just just roll with it. Like, yeah, it's cool. I got I got one of those uh, I got one of those Chipotle cards out of it. So you still got one? I did. It's it was like the they do it for like a year. So I had it for like a couple you like years. Completely off Chipotle now because you did that? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not off it. I wouldn't say I definitely don't go as much as I used to in the, in the minor leagues. But okay. it's in the it's in the rotation every now and then. <laughs> All right. What about uh, taking your shoes off on the plane, off base or on base? Uh Probably off base. I think oh, on on our on our. You don't want to be comfortable on our flights. Yeah, you can. I feel like yeah, but if yeah, you're going yeah. on like a normal commercial flight, yeah, no, no. But well, on see, the flights wear, we do during the season, yeah, yeah. You can I do. mean, definitely. I wear socks. Yeah, you can do whatever you want on regular commercial flights, and then I just will dispose of the socks because you know airplanes are nasty. But you just I like walk through the airport with socks. on? No, I don't do oh, that. Okay. Just the plane though. I okay. I won't get comfortable. I don't know. I'm on base. That's so. fair. That's fair. I get it. I got to try that out then. I can't say I'm in, I'm in or out on that because I have never, never tried it. Well, I mean, we're just going to roll with off base because, uh, <laughs> All right. you know, but but on in uh, regular fights. So what about darkness retreats? <laughs> never done a darkness retreat. I have to ask Aaron about that one. <laughs> yeah, <'cause>, please. Yeah, <laughs> see, so he's big. I mean, I figured. Have uh, you, you ever done one? No, nah, I figured you and Aaron, y'all were cool, y'all here in Milwaukee I together. Like, y'all. I feel like four days, four days in the darks, uh, or three days, however long it is, it's a little, it's a little. Do you hard. know what it's supposed to be for? Like that, that like I, I'm, what is it I supposed to be? I don't really for? know. I feel like you're supposed to like see things, maybe, or you kind of just oh. spend time with like. It's like sensory deprivation. Where you can you see kinda, things in the dark. Maybe mm. I kind of heard that if you spend like a lot of time in the dark, you start to like have like hallucinations and stuff, and like see some stuff and. Learn about your life. So you I don't know. know. I've never, I've never done it, and I don't really plan on doing it right now. But okay, so we're on the street. You're off on on darkness retreats. What about okay. um, comparisons to to Pete Davidson? You in, <laughs> in or out on that? I've gotten that a lot. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it started in 2014 or 15. I did the. It was on intentional talk, yep. and some of they asked like if you ever get any comparisons and that was like before pete kind of took off he was still he was on snl still but he was kind of just starting out um and they said it on there and then it kind of got back to him and he came out the city field yep. when we played the mets there dressed up um as me and kind of took bp <laughs> which they didn't tell anybody that he was coming so like the the strength coach who was running stretch was like 
who's this guy? Like, no, they didn't started, know. Yeah, he started yelling at him. Because <laughs> the Marlins didn't tell anybody that he was showing up. They just, like, rolled him out there. And they, they thought it was, like, a fan plan. or something. So what, what's, the, what's the weird? Have you ever had, like, a weird place that you were like, oh, that's Pete Davidson? No one's ever come up to me and thought I was, like, actually Pete. Mm-hmm. But every night we play, mm-hmm. somebody's screaming so Pete Davidson at me, especially so, on the road. So do you see it or no? Are you like I don't know. He I've I've met him a few times and he he knows about like cuz he gets it a little bit or he used to get it a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Um we kind of both agree that we don't really look too much like each other. So you're uh, off base on Pete Davidson. Probably, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. What about uh the home run celebrations with props? Yeah, I mean <laughs> I guess you kind of have to be on base about it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody I'm, does yeah, it. I'm like, all right, it's kind of – it, it kind of just how the game's going. Yeah. Now. Like, I, I could I could take it or leave I mean, it on you that. Play, you got to play in the WBC, so – Right. So – What did you think of that, by the way? It was amazing. It's amazing, right? That was the best baseball experience I've ever – It's incredible. And people get mad when you say that, but it's just a different – it's a different experience than it's a different anything experience. else because – I went into it being like, okay, like I'm getting out of spring training. This would be mm-hmm. cool to play for Team USA. Like, obviously, you want to win, and it's pride. And then when you show up and that game starts, like you have like this whole another like it, competitive feeling. Where, like different. we're not losing, we can't lose. Like completely can't. different. And then the yeah. atmosphere is incredible. Um, so it's really hard to describe to people until you've like actually been a part of it. Yeah. And it's like this is amazing. Yeah. Like you want to do it as many times as you can because. It's a. It's better than spring training. It's way better. But then than it's just training. like you get to play with like in all star games. You you're there for like two days with the mm-hmm. guys. It's so busy, yep. and you don't really have a time to like. It's, you're not really on the same team. Like for that, you're on the same team for like two weeks, yep. and you get to play with these guys and talk to them. And that was the thing. I think that was the best thing was getting to talk to them and um, getting to learn their routines. Right. What makes them them go? Getting to see them be competitive as well you know yeah that was the coolest part was just seeing guys like do their thing and obviously some of the best players in the game like, and then you come together yeah i think that was the what i really enjoyed the most is that it was i don't even know how many guys are on the team but yeah we're just we're not all random we kind of know each other but you get and you get in that and you just come together like you yeah. don't i don't know these people right but we're all on the same team. We're rooting for the yeah. rooting for each other. Well, you, you become a, you got you get the plane rides, bus rides. You go to dinners. Like you got practices. Yeah. Together. So you become a team, and especially over that amount of time, and then short, you're in that atmosphere where it's like you're with the boys, and a lot of the times, like you're the you're not the team that everybody's rooting for, mm-hmm. depending on like mm-hmm. which city or stadium yeah. or team you're playing yeah. for. So it's a cool atmosphere when it's like you and the boys against like forty five thousand. Yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. It's, it's sick. All right, so what about the pitch clock? I like it. I, I really do. I, I kind of wish it was. I kind of wish it was twenty seconds the whole time. Okay. I think. I think that would make it a little bit easier. I mean, I f- I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like the f- the fifteen seconds with nobody on base, like if you look down at all, yeah, like you're looking back no up, time. and it's like there's it's, no it's like a ten, and you're like, oh god, <laughs> there's no time. You know? no, I, I think it's dope. I think it really has helped. Like. Like last night, I mean, you guys scored nine, mm-hmm. and um, usually when that happens, it's a long. That's game. a long yeah. game. Keeps it moving. Yeah, but the yeah. game was still under three hours. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's great. You get home, eat dinner. Right. I think it know. shows how much dead time like there used. To, like nobody likes that four hour nine inning game. Mm-hmm. Like those would mm-hmm. just those would just drag, you know. And it, it makes the season so much longer too. Where you're just like you're out there, like you said, if you're getting blown out or you're blowing somebody out, like the game kind of just crawls, and then you know you kind of got a guy out there walking around taking yep. a, a yep. minute between yep. pitches. Yep. And you're just like, come on, man, like <laughs> let's move, let's move this thing along. But it's been good. I think it it, it was a little bit of an adjustment period. Yep. And, um, obviously, you're gonna have the every now and then. You know, you're gonna get you're gonna get banged with a yeah, strike or, I got or something's gonna one. something's gonna happen yeah. but i think for the most part it's good and I, I've, I've liked it so far so staying on the pitch clock situation what do you think about because a, a couple guys got banged mm-hmm. when they had their going home party like so yeah. when i go back to boston i'm just gonna have to take a strike you know what i'm saying or or you know what i think they yeah. can submit 
they can now. I think they said I'm submitting it for them. <laughs> well, I I'm feel getting like, that. So I, I, I don't. I think that that's crazy. How you gonna bang somebody? You know what I'm saying? I just feel like there should be some feel there. Like it's not yeah. that hard to like know. Like the, you're not trying to waste time. Yeah, like, I'm you're not. not you're not there being like, oh, I, I don't care. Like I'm just gonna. I'm just going to take five minutes before I get in the mm-hmm. box. Like, obviously, you've won World Series, MVPs for, you know, yeah, that team. city and, yep. and team. Like, obviously, they're going to show you love, just like when Belly came back and played you guys. And Yep. Um, he got banged. Yeah, and We he were did. all like, oh, my gosh. None of right. us wanted that. None, yeah. none of us wanted it's that, like, you know. Come on. Like, the umpires know what's going on. Like, yeah. they're not trying to. And I, I don't know if they just don't have a choice or, or what the deal is, but. Uh, and that kid that made his debut after 13 yeah. years in the, in the minor leagues gets Got a standing ovation. Like, hey, bud, <laughs> oh one. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Go get him. That was crazy. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, the main point of the show is I want to I want to know like kind of how you got learn about you, but also how you got to Christian Yelich. You know what I'm saying? And so, kind of talk about your life a little bit. So. Grew up in Southern California, yep. in Thousand Oaks. Mm-hmm. I think I live like 15 minutes from there, by the Did way. You? Yeah, it's close. Great area. You, uh, great area. So you grew up going to Dodger games. Yeah, all the time. So you were a Dodger fan. Yeah. I remember I sat in the uh, – every time we play there, I kind of know like where in the stadium like I used to sit as a kid. Oh, really? I think okay. my first ever Dodger game – up in the blue seats. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. the third baseline, maybe like the third or fourth row up in the in the the top section. I don't remember who they were playing. I, th- I want to say either like the Reds or the Phillies or somebody like yeah. that. But then, um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was where I used to sit. And then yeah, every I had now season and- tickets up there. No, no, no season, <laughs> no season tickets. But uh, I had buddies and stuff. There was like a, I think I had a friend or two that maybe their family had season tickets or they would go all the time and then you'd mm-hmm. get a sit in like that lower bowl. Okay. I thought yeah. that was the coolest thing ever because yeah. you're like on the first level and you got to watch you know a major league game like that close when you're a kid or. Mm-hmm. Like changing in the parking lot of Dodger Stadium, like coming from a baseball game, <laughs> changing out of like your baseball uniform, Nasty. putting on like regular clothes, yeah. probably just smelling terrible. Yeah, when you're like 12 years old, oh, yeah. going to a going oh, yeah. to a Dodger Hated game. showers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know exactly. So that was that was pretty. That's pretty cool. So give me give me like what about uh, you got like three favorite baseball moments that you remember from Dodger Stadium from the from Dodger watching? Stadium. Um, it's okay. I don't. think just like. Just like my favorite thing about like going to games as a kid was just like get in the parking lot and like walking up to the stadium. Okay, like yeah, you know, like yeah, you're yeah. going to the game, like you're not in there yet, but like you see the stadium, and like you know, now we kind of get so used to it because like yeah. that's just like your that's your office. You go there every mm-hmm. day, so it's like it kind of wears off a little bit. Where yeah. it's like, yeah, this is cool. Like obviously, it's it's awesome playing in the big leagues, but when you're a kid, like you see like the big stadium, and then like you finally get in and you can you see the field. Mm-hmm. And you're like, damn, like this is cool. And like, I vividly remember sitting there with like my buddies and stuff, being like, man, that'd be so cool to be out there one day. Yeah. Um, you know, like I wonder all the stuff that these guys get. Like, you know, like oh, when you're yeah. when gear. you're a kid, like you gear. care about the gear, man. Yeah, you care about like you the want. batting gloves and like the cleats yeah, and all that stuff. That's and how you uh, want. that's like well, I, I still I still remember that and like all that. And I remember first time playing at Dodger Stadium was was something. It was super cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I remember being pretty nervous actually for it and. You know, you, you had, had probably like, had a lot of fam there, a ton of people yeah. the first time, and then year after year after year, it kind of World trickles World. down, yeah. and like you still have like your your core group of buddies and family and stuff that goes when you're out there. But um, I remember having a ton of people, and I just remember before that game, I was like, man, if there's any game like not to suck, like just please be this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, four days from now, you can do terrible, but, <laughs> yeah. but tonight, like please do good. But you're you're um, a Jeter fan growing up as well. Yeah, I like Jeter. I mean, that was just kind of when I was learning baseball. Um, like, the Yankees were always on TV. Yep. Like, the late 90s, yeah. they were always winning. They were always in the playoffs in the World Series. So, as a kid, like, you don't know a ton yet. You just kind of watch sports on TV. And so, watching the playoffs, seeing Jeter, obviously, um, the role he played on those teams and be on the Yankees, you kind of became familiar with him. And so, um, I really like watching him play mm-hmm. i think the guys on the dodgers at the time was like they were like sean green and eric gagne and eric Karros. like those those guys mm-hmm. um were playing when i was going to the games back back then but um yeah it was cool so 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 grew up that 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 that's so would it have me- meant a lot if you could could have put on a dodge like would you have been like man i wanted or you didn't care you just wanted to, to just be in the league 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think that'd be that'd be pretty cool. I mean, it's just one of those things where you just don't know how your your career is going to play out. Like, you yeah. don't necessarily have control of. Where, and I, know, where I mean, you're not now. But no, yeah, saying, but, you, but as a kid, like growing up, you're like, yeah, this would be this would be really cool, just because that's where you that's where you learned baseball. You yeah, know? I was like um, listening to Vince Scully and just yeah, like yeah, going yeah. to these games and like I grew up. Yeah, 30, 40 minutes from the stadium. So we'd go to did Angel you, Games did you every play, night. Did you get to play with Jeter as well? Like, uh, did you play against him? In spring training one time. Okay. It was, uh, was, that cool? was that cool? Super cool. It was in, it was in uh, we played in Panama for a uh, Mariano Rivera, like oh, just retired okay. the year okay. before. So it was like Marlins, Yankees, and Panama for like a tribute series yep. to, to Mo. Oh, and nice. uh, I think I might have been a rookie or had like a couple months in the league at that time. And CC was pitching. Mm. I was leading off, and Jeter was playing shortstop. Yep. And um, I kind of remember, like, getting in the box, like, looking out. He's doing, like, his whole, like, pre, pre-game, pre pre-pitch routine. I remember, like, oh, like, this is the big leagues. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like time. Uh, like yeah. time. I need I need a second and then uh, get back in and do it. But I, I remember that being pretty cool. Um, yeah, I got, to meet, I got to meet him. And uh, I don't really get nervous when I meet people. No. Nah. Um, but maybe it's because I was I was 21 and my debut in Yankee Stadium and um, the day that the day before I got to meet him and I was shaking, yeah. I was shaking when I got. I was him. nervous too, actually. Yeah, but like he you has said, just this presence. Yeah, well, it's just different. Yeah. Like you know, like you said, you get to meet a lot of cool people, um, especially doing what we do. Like you get to mm-hmm. you just meet a lot of people, but there's a few there's a few people where you're like oh. Yeah, like, and he's he's one of them. Yeah, he's he was definitely he was definitely one of them. So you uh, planned? I'm assuming you signed you signed a, a letter of intent to go to Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Marlins drafted you. Yeah, um, and so you decided to sign. How was that? I know you signed right before yeah. the deadline. So I didn't think I was gonna get, like when I when I committed to college at the time. Like I actually thought I was gonna go to college. Like I wasn't yeah, one of yeah. like I wasn't like a super hyped draft guy. Like some of these guys that are in, in high school now are call like they know that they're gonna be drafted in like the first round and mm-hmm. like, there's no chance they're going to school. I wasn't really that guy. Like I never made a Team USA. I never made any of the, like the All American games. Were, were the exact same. Right. Like I never yeah. made any of that stuff. Tried to. Got cut from all of it. <laughs> 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 but. uh I was like, I wasn't a great showcase player as a kid. Yeah, like, yeah, I could, you just a good I could player. hit. Like, our arm was not good. Like, I could run a little bit, but I was never like the fastest sixty guy. I was never hitting the farthest homers in BP. Like, but when the game started, I could always play. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't necessarily like show up in the in the showcase format because like you don't have any tools that like jump off the page. Yeah. You know. So at the time, like I thought I was going to college when I committed, and there was a. There was like a showcase at like the Urban Youth Academy out in LA um, with like a bunch of kids and everybody from like all over like the West Coast of the United States. And like the kind of the stars just like aligned that day, like had a really good showcase, like played really good in the game, had like a really good batting practice, ran a good 60. Mm-hmm. And then like the game started and got a bunch of hits. And then after that, kind of started being in the the draft conversation okay. but at the time of like making the college commitment I, was, I thought for sure I was going to school yeah, you yeah. know and then even when the draft happened like I didn't know where I was going to be picked like I didn't even know the Marlins were going to pick me like they never talked to me or anything before the draft and then I remember kind of watching it on tv uh and I wasn't even looking at the tv at the time because the Marlins were picking and I was like I haven't talked to these guys ever like they're not definitely not picking me and then I heard my name on the tv oh wow uh, okay I guess I'm drafted by the Marlins. So then, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I did uh, that same that stuff. You know, right, right before the deadline, yeah. I was going to school. I mean, I was mm-hmm. packing my clothes up. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you hear your name, and then your adrenaline starts rushing and yeah. everything. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, like I definitely wanted to play pro ball. Yeah. But you're 18 years old. Like, I was in high school two months early. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I kind of went all the way down to the deadline because, like, I didn't really know. I didn't really know what they were going to offer me at the time. And once I signed, I, I was like, I think I'll know how this is going to go pretty early on. Yep. Like, you'll, you kind of know mm-hmm. inside of you, like, if you can hack it or not. Yeah. And I was like, well, I guess if this doesn't work out, like, I'll just, I'll just go to school, yep. you know, afterwards. Yep. Like, I'll, I'll know after a few years how it's going to go. But I was like, this is really what I want to do. Um, 
I was like, all right, well, like, let's do it and, yep. see, what, and see what happens. And so you, you got drafted. You ended up, uh, <clears throat> you know, signing. And then you go into minor league ball. And this is when people forget about the draft, the guys that mm-hmm. were drafted a couple years ago, right? Because yeah. you go into this, you know, I mean, I don't even know what you would call the minor leagues. You know what I'm saying? The jungle. Yeah, the jungle. (laughs) There you go. It's the jungle. (laughs) And 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 you. So you grind in there, Mm -hmm. right? And and did did you grind there really? So because I mean, you got you drafted drafted in 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 ten, and you debuted in thirteen. Yeah. And so I know for me, like I was drafted in eleven and debuted in Mm fourteen. There was real. I had realistically two months that I I did not play well. Outside of that, I. Banged yeah. the whole time, for, and so you had to yeah. have done the same thing. For me, it was every every level. Like the first month, month and a half, I would kind of struggle a little yeah. bit, um, and then after that, you would kind of get used to the level and start playing good. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really like the, you have to learn how to struggle. I think like a big part of baseball is like yeah. learning how to fail because up until then, you haven't really failed a ton because. Mm-hmm. You're drafted, yeah. like you're doing well. Like you kind of dominated high school or wherever you're at. Like you're always kind of the better athlete and just able to succeed. And then, like you said, you're kind of just thrown into this mix, and it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter if you're a first round. You pick. don't know who you don't yeah. know anybody. Yeah, and you're just like, here we go. Um, I guess we're doing this thing, and you kind of learn how to play. I think circumstances kind of helped a little bit. Like you know what team you're on. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I would have. I don't know if I would have been in the big leagues and. 2013 if I was anywhere but in Miami you know it was kind of just an opportunity as a young player to to play in the big leagues get your feet wet the team wasn't great at the time so they're kind of seeing um what their young players could do and you know obviously if you're in the system of a perennial playoff team or a team that has world series aspirations it's a little bit different like when you come up you're expected to to produce and you got to contribute to you know that goal of the team of making the playoffs and like when I came up my first year we lost 100 games you yeah know? so it was a little bit different and, and kind of fortunate in the fact that you kind of got to learn on the job a little bit mm-hmm. like you got to fail in the big league see what it was like without those like <clears throat> crazy expectations right away yep and then so much of like so much of this is like getting an opportunity and then when you get an opportunity yeah. taking can't, advantage of it you yeah, can't miss it because you don't get a ton of them in the game like once you once you come up like you kind of have to play well otherwise you kind of get that label of the, the up and down guy or like oh this guy's good in the minor leagues but can't really do it in the big leagues and that might not necessarily be true like it's kind of just time like if yeah. you feel good at the plate you're gonna play well and if you're yeah. kind of grinding when you get called up like it's gonna be a grind yeah um, it's gonna be a grind yeah and i think in today's game i don't know about you but a lot of these guys just get like when they're in the minor leagues, like they're the next face of the franchise. They're the savior. They're going to be the next, like watch the draft in, in two months. Like there's so many, this guy's the next, this guy's going to be a perennial 30, 30 guy in in the big leagues. I think that's what it is. I think to your point is I don't think that part has changed. Right. Like the, 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 we, those, these guys are banging just like we banged. Right. But I think, the, the expectations that people put on them has changed. Yeah, and you just got to let guys <clears throat> play in yeah. big leagues. Like, they're going to be really good, talented players, but yeah. it's so hard to come up to the, the major leagues and play well right away. There's yeah. only a handful of guys that don't really, like, struggle. Like, yeah. everybody kind of comes up and does well for, like, a week or two, and then, then the you league struggle. Kinda figures you out, and then you struggle, and you just got to adjust. Yeah. And it's just part of being a young player in the big leagues. Like, you just have to learn. Um, learn on the job, and you got to take the ups and downs. And you, you so you got to learn from some good guys mm-hmm. from Stanton. Yeah, Stanton. O- Ozuna. Ozuna was a good. Uh, hey, that guy can hit. He can, he can hit. flat out he can hit. hit. Yeah. How, what was it like playing in the outfield with him? I, I mean, I, I played with him all the way up through the minor leagues, and I remember him being really, really talented. Like he could do, he could do everything. Mm-hmm. He had a lot of power. He had a great arm. He could run. I was like, damn, and then <laughs> JT too. Like, yeah. you play with oh, a lot yeah, of yeah, you play with a lot of guys in the minor leagues. We're just like, we didn't know it at the time, but we had like eight or nine guys ended up playing and are still playing. Didn't y'all play together? Yeah, Andy Barquette was yeah. y'all's manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was the manager. Uh, he was my hitting coach. Yeah. And he used to tell me about Yelly and J. Uh, all yeah, you guys. Mariznick was on the team. Oh, J- yeah. Fernandez, Mark Canna. Like, yeah. we had a pretty good. Looking back on it, we had a really talented 
minor league all team. come through the mar- minors i mean uh, marlins. marlins yeah all at the same time too wow. like everybody everybody was down there um and we just we didn't know any better at the time but we thought everybody was pretty talented and watching those guys do their thing and then being a young player coming up with those guys in the big leagues is ichiro and then don okay. Manley was the manager yeah, yeah. um you know stanton juan pierre like yeah. all these being around a lot of awesome veteran players kind of showing you the way in the big leagues yeah. early on I mean, Jeff Mathis had a big impact on on my career for oh, sure. Yeah. Um, oh, you had a lot. You were you were around dudes. Yeah, just kind of. You you, you never really wanted to disappoint them either. Like, yeah. they would never get mad at you. They'd be just like, "Come on, man." Yeah, you'd feel so bad. You're like, but it was oh. pro- that probably was good. That was probably kind of good for you. Yeah, you know, because it kind of like pushed you. Yeah, where you just know? like didn't want to do anything to mm-hmm. where like they would be disappointed like yeah. you always wanted the veteran players to like you yeah. i felt like and you're just like all right i gotta i gotta lock it in like yeah oh, can't do that anymore. especially playing but like off the field is the part that that yeah. you really don't want to disappoint them like yeah. you know don't forget the beer forget the beer don't i forgot forget it in kansas city one time and that's such a far <laughs> that's such a far walk back to the clubhouse it's like a quarter mile back to the clubhouse you're sprinting because like we're gonna leave you if yeah you don't be back here in time. yeah so i'll never forget that um all right so I want to ask this, bro. You had Barry Bonds mm-hmm. as a hitting coach. Yeah. And I had Ken Griffey Jr. as a hitting coach. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you my experience, and I want to hear about yours. Yeah. So Griff was our hitting coach for Team USA. And obviously we know Griff is Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. And I think sometimes, like, when it when he would help us with hitting, because he has all the knowledge in the world. Right. I think sometimes I couldn't understand it. And he was saying it correctly. Yeah. But I just, I, because he was King Griffey Jr. and he could do it. Yeah. I think he may have thought that I could do it. Right. And I can't do, you know what I'm saying, some of the things. But he was amazing. And all the knowledge that I learned about just purely, like, taking pitches or how to take pitches or or just how to navigate at bats. Yeah. Like that is stuff that he taught me that I mean, it's irreplaceable, you right. know. And so I want to hear about Barry Bonds cuz a lot of it's not mechanical. A lot of it's is 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 just mental, thought based, yeah. I mean, Barry was so so talented. Like everything he did like we were talking about earlier about just like simple repeatable mm-hmm. he was like he had one of the most simple repeatable swings yeah. of of all time. And that's why he was able to do what he did. And, like, him talking about hitting and watching him hit, it looked so easy. Like yeah, he would, watching yeah, him hit. Yeah. He would, like, it's demonstrate, like, like, the drill or what he was talking about in the cage, and you'd just be watching, like, man, like, this looks so easy. Yeah. And then you'd go in there and try and do it, and you just smother yeah. balls. <laughs> I can't do that. You know, and you're I mean, just I like, do that. he yeah. talked about his top hand a lot and, like, catching the ball mm-hmm, like he would just mm-hmm. be like if i can catch it yeah I can that's, hit it. that's his drill right <laughs> right you if you can put a glove on and if you can catch it and he's yeah. like if i can go from here to here before you throw a ball from 60 feet to the plate like i got you he's like you can it doesn't matter how hard you throw like i'm still gonna get you <laughs> <laughs> and i remember i remember asking him what he thought about the shift i was like barry what do you, what do you think about the shift because that's kind of when the shift was just starting out again like he used to get shifted all the time but mm-hmm. for the most of us like we weren't really getting shifted a whole lot back then i was like what do you, what do you think about the shift okay he was like man the only thing the shift did was stop me from hitting 400 oh okay <laughs> right. you can't you can't catch it if it's in the water i was like oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny so 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 it was it was a great experience so i want to ask like you know we had we both won mvp in mm-hmm. 18 right and then how has it been i mean i guess you kind of touched on it earlier but trying to return back to the mm-hmm. mvp form like from what i understood earlier is i'm not really trying to do that i'm just trying to be who i am today yeah is that kind of is that kind of where where well, i where think you're... you i think you chase it for a while yep. you know yeah, like, yeah, obviously you got to spend I, your time chasing it yep. yeah i've i've struggled a little bit the last few years just trying to to kind of find it again there's obviously some things that happen but that's kind of part of sports um you know going through that stuff but i think you want to just try and be the best version of yourself yep. and like give what you have that day you mm-hmm. know obviously we're all striving to be the best version of ourselves and um you know what we can do out on the yeah. field and it's just like just finding a way to do that all the time and you're always constantly working and uh trying to make adjustments to yeah to do that and like you know i still feel like I got a lot in there, a lot in the mm-hmm. tank left. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, and I'm, I'm, I know you do too. Like we still got a long time to play, especially you, you got, yeah, you, no, yeah, you got a, a long time. you got a minute left, but, um, yeah, man. It, in, in a way, like you kind of just have to embrace it. Like, yeah. you know, there's obviously the frustrations of it and, um, you know, the expectations coming with have done that. And then, you know, signing deals, like everything that comes along with all that. Um, and you just want to be, you just, you just want to be the best version of you, whatever that may be. Um, and you got to put the work in. And then when you put the work in, it is what it is. Yeah. Kind of once the game starts, like you yeah. can't really control yeah. that. Yeah. Like you can control what you do before and how hard you work and your preparation. But then once, once it starts, it's like, you just got to play. Yeah. And then, and, and if we don't like, if, if we don't play as well, right. Mm-hmm. Um, Giannis, I, 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 I don't know if you saw the video when Giannis talked about failure. Yeah. And uh, I want to hear your like your viewpoint. How, like, like, do you agree with uh, with Giannis when he when he said that? Because yeah. you know, I, I think you can't just all or nothing. You know, what I'm saying there's steps yeah. in order to get to where you want to get to. I, I mean, I definitely agree with it. And I know, <clears throat> I know it was kind of like a polarizing quote at the time. Like people were either all in on it or like they couldn't have disagreed more. Mm-hmm. You know, but playing sports, like you know, like there's only one team that wins the championship every right. year. So. Yeah. Did every team fail that didn't win the championship? No, like mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think that's true at all. Um, there's definitely teams that do fail. Mm-hmm. Like, there's mm-hmm. definitely teams mm-hmm. that have failure of a season. But just because you didn't win at all, or you had a team that was super talented and just didn't win at all, it's not necessarily a failure because, like in sports, sometimes you just lose. Yeah. Like you just lose. Like it doesn't go your way. They get paid too. Yeah. Well, they get paid too, or like. There's there's some luck involved in winning too, oh, especially sure. especially in the playoffs. Like yeah. you know, there's there's a few plays that decide a game, mm-hmm. and they either go your way, or, they either go your way, or they don't, right? And I think so many times, people who cover sports, who analyze sports, fans that watch sports, there always needs to be like in that their mind, like somebody to blame. Oh like, yeah, you know, like sure. you can't just you can't just be like, well, they just lost, like yeah. you know, like it didn't go their way and they lost. It's yeah. always like it has to be. This guy's fault. It's the coach's fault. Yeah. It's this player's fault. Like there always needs to be somebody to blame and to throw it on. Just appreciating that instead of being like, "Hey, like that team made the plays they needed to make to win. win. This bounce didn't go our way, and it happened. And that's why when you win, it's so special because it's so hard to do. Yeah. And so many things need to go right. Like you need guys to be healthy at the right time. You need those few plays to go your yeah. way. Like you need to be playing well at the time." And so it's not necessarily a failure if you don't win at all. Like obviously everyone's goal is to win the championship. Like nobody nobody on the Bucks wanted to lose. Right. You know, like nobody yeah. was going into that game being like, Well, if we win, that's cool. If we lose, that's cool too. Like obviously they want to win. Yeah. But sometimes when you lose, you learn and Yeah. That's it makes you appreciate the times where you do come out on top mm-hmm. and you do win. So I, I being that I've won two I've, I've got been able to win mm-hmm. a couple World Series like in those world world series the, the common thing was we got hot. Yeah. Like we got hot at the right time. And if you get hot at the right time, I don't care what team it is. Right. They're going to win. Yeah. The bounces are going their way. Yeah. The guys are pitching good. You're making all the diving plays, mm-hmm. doing everything the right way, and you're getting yeah. all the two out you got hits. That two out, second and third hit, yeah. and you score two. You know, so that, yeah. that's we played the Braves in 21, and they beat us, man. They they had 80 something wins coming into the postseason, and um, you get hot. I remember us thinking we, before we played them, we're like, man, this is gonna be this is gonna be a really tough series. Yeah. Everyone thought we were gonna win and end up playing you guys in the LCS. I'm like, ah. We'll see. Like this is yeah. gonna be a really, really tough series, and they ended up beating us, and then they ended up winning the whole thing. The they just got, thing. they got red hot at the right time, and yeah. took it the whole way. Yeah. So, all right, bro. So, I want to open up to the chat. Um. At Joe. Okay. Uh, there's a question that says, I don't know. I can't say that. Mookie, if you weren't a baseball player, you'd be a bowler. What would you be, Yelly? That's a good question. <clears throat> I don't really know, honestly. Like I, I for for as long as I can remember, I always wanted to play baseball. Yeah. And like never had a never had a plan B. And I I don't know if that's a good thing or a or a bad thing. You're Christian Yelich in but, the big leagues. But for the most part, like that's kind of how it has to be, I think. Like in like we were talking about the minor leagues earlier. Yeah. I kind of found like playing with guys 
in the minor leagues who had like a plan B or another option would kind of tend to want to take that option mm-hmm. instead of putting it all in. instead of grinding because like you know how it is, dude. Especially back then was that's a grind. Like Yo. you're on a 13 hour bus ride, you eat dinner when the bus needs gas. Yeah. So that's like yeah. that could be three in the morning at yeah. an Alabama rest stop, yeah. you know, and you're eating whatever was Waffle House. Yeah, whatever's on the yeah. rotisserie exactly. that yeah. that was there all day that nobody else wanted. You're like, well, I guess that's my dinner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't really want it, then you kind of tend to maybe gravitate towards that other option. And it was just like, well, here we are. Like this yeah. is there's this is the only option because you're competing against guys that where that is really the only mm-hmm. option. Like they are all in. So if you can't match that all in, then I just feel like it's not going to go as well for you. Yeah, I mean, in in due time, you'll f- you'll find out what you want to do. You know. Yeah, I mean, you really want to do. Yeah, and post baseball, like who knows what that ends up being? Yeah, you like know. you know, I'm not. I know I'm not going to play baseball forever. So um, obviously, you get into some stuff afterwards. But my mindset as a kid or in the minor leagues was like, I'm I'm going all in on this, and we'll see what happens yeah. after. <laughs> all right. So, what about well, who's your favorite artist to listen to? Um. I'm not really the clubhouse DJ. I think we got a bunch of guys in there that that have a good mix. It's usually for us. It's whoever's starting that day oh, kind yeah, of okay. plays. That's normal. Yeah, That's they normal. kind of play the stuff. So, you know, being in baseball, you you get to listen to all kinds of stuff from yeah. country to Latin music to rap. <laughs> like you get a little bit. You get, you get a little well bit of everything in music. Yeah, which is kind of cool actually. You get you, get a, you, you learn a bunch of a bunch of songs that maybe you wouldn't listen to yeah. normally, um, and then you hear them like when you go out somewhere and like oh I heard yeah you're like you oh know. okay cool yeah that's how I learned about Bad Bunny back then. <laughs> 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 the Latin guy yeah all right so if MLB players were a slam dunk con if MLB players were innocent slam dunk contest who do you choose would win I feel like Amir Garrett would be a pretty good I would it like be a very pretty good choice I feel uh, like the same thing. He used to kind of do that when he came in from yeah, he did came it. in from he the did. bullpen. Yeah. So I was like, I'll I'll pick you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you could probably dunk, but no, I wouldn't win a, a you slam, wouldn't win the dunk contest. Dunk. Yeah, I would. No. I wouldn't win. I gotta stand there and watch it a couple of years ago because because yeah, yeah. Coniston used me as a yeah, prop. Yeah, yeah. He jumped was over that, me. Was that was that dope? It was, that was so, super dope. Was so Were sick. you nervous? A little bit. All actually. you had to do was stand there. Well, there was another one. Like, if he advanced, there was one where it was kind of going to – I was going to have to flip him a ball oh. while he did a 360, and he would, was going to catch it with his glove and dunk a basketball at the same time. That would have been – Right. So a lot of that was on me to, like, flip it good and at the right time. The other one, I kind of just had to stand there. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that one was pretty easy. But I remember I remember when he did it, I couldn't – I didn't know if he made it or not mm-hmm. because I couldn't see. Like, he yeah, grabbed yeah. the ball, and like, my head kind of goes down, and he dunked it, and, like, the crowd reaction is kind of the same whether you make it or not. Yeah, yeah, so, like, yeah. I remember him doing it, and I kind of, like, look up, like, did we make it? <laughs> <laughs> and then he was, like, he was all fired up. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, all right, sweet, we made it. And then the next one would have been a little bit of pressure if I had to flip him because yeah, yeah, that's, hey, that's like a little your, pressure. your dunk contest kind of relies, <laughs> on, relies on my flipping ability right now, so I don't want to mess it up for you. So what about who, uh, who do we feel like is the best player we've played with? Oof. Or against either one. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's hard not to say the obvious, the Mike Trouts, the Otani. Yeah, those guys you know, are pretty. It's hard not to say. Those that. guys are pretty. We just played We just played Mike and, and Shohei. Yeah. Um, which is crazy. Like, what, what Shohei is doing right now is it's incredible, it's in- honestly. Like, to, to be able to, to throw 102 miles an hour and then hit 40 homers in the shows, I don't know how you could do that. I definitely couldn't do that. And then, no. What Mike's done consistently for the last 10, 11 years yeah. is, is pretty impressive, too. Um, and just just sharing a field with those guys is, is, is pretty yeah. cool. Um, you know, I got to play with Ichiro back in the day, which, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is pretty cool to see him get 3,000 hits. Um, you know. I'd, say, I'd, say, I'd say a lot of those guys, mm-hmm. right, they're, they they weren't the fat they're not the fastest mm-hmm. they're not the strongest they're not the most athletic but they do it all oh, together everything. every everything. day you know yeah. what I'm saying like they don't you they don't go hit the most impressive VPs Mm-mm. you know what I'm saying Mike Trout isn't going throwing everybody out right no but he throws guys out and he hits forty every year you know what I'm saying he hit the quietest forty homers in the league last year uh, no one talked saying? about it and then you like look up and you hit forty homers yeah and he missed like. 40 years. That's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not even just like 
I feel like the the people that I've I've played with, that I've seen a lot of very talented people, but as far as just putting it all together, you know, those guys, you know, the the obvious guys are are, are the best ones that I, I've played with. I think, yeah, I mean, or you're kind of one of them too, dude. But when you watch the when you watch the when you watch the star players, like when you, it's kind of just different. Like everybody plays the game, but when when you get like the superstar level players, like the game just looks different when yeah. they play it. Um, I can't really describe what it is. Like I don't know if if you agree. Like when when they hit or when they're doing, like the game just looks a little bit yeah. different. Like they're controlling. Like yeah. we're gonna see what he does. Yeah. Not what not what our guy is doing. Like okay, we gotta see what he does. Hopefully he doesn't hit a home run. Hopefully he right. doesn't. You know. Yeah. Like hopefully he gets himself out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't you know, know what I'm saying. Gonna, and it's hard. It's, you know? That's real though. I think everybody would say the same thing. Especially yeah. Against or like the ball comes off different. Yeah, or like they hit it, you know, yeah. like even out. Like you said, even outs are a little bit different yeah like, um, yeah i know exactly what you're saying it's like to a normal person or like a, it's it's kind of hard to describe that but when you play like the game kind of looks different to yeah. some guys so what about this uh would you ever want to take a slide down the slide after you hit a home run like run up there after yeah <laughs> call time out yeah <laughs> just run up there up would you the want to th- do up that? to the third deck <laughs> I don't know. No, the, the, the way baseball's going, you never know these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the time we're done playing, maybe it's like a full on, full on skit. <laughs> Before but. I let you go, bro, tell me about your charity. You got a charity, yeah, it, coming up soon. Charity event yeah, coming soon. Tell me about it. So yeah, it's the it's the first one. Um, we meant to do it a few years ago, but obviously with COVID and everything that kind of happened, it, it wasn't really possible. But um, it's just a charity to raise money for uh, you know facilities redoing baseball fields in Milwaukee. Um, so kids have an opportunity to play on, on good fields and, and, and renovate them and, um, you know, maybe have some stuff go towards like an indoor bubble to where, you know, it gets cold here in the winter and mm-hmm. have an opportunity to have a, have a place where they can play inside and, and kind of get better at what they do. Yep. You know, being from, you know, there's places, California, Arizona, Florida, like all these baseball hotbeds, you can play year round. In some places you just don't really have that opportunity, whether it's facilities or, um, you don't have a place to go. So, just working on on giving kids the the opportunity to uh, you know play sports year round here and um, raise some money so they have some better facilities. Nice, yeah, All right, bro. Thank you, uh, thank you for coming on, man. No, thanks for, for having me, man. So one, this has been uh, super dope. I uh, want to thanks to thank the fans for uh, joining. Make sure you follow Bleacher Report for more content, for more on base content. We will be doing this throughout the season. So uh, shout out to Christian Yelich for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for having me, dude. Hope it's hope it a good first one. We had oh, a lot, of, fr- amazing, lot of pressure bro. being the first one. So yeah, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir.